When you're live streaming and you have multiple guests or hosts, and especially if they're remote from each other, one of the challenges is getting everyone's audio levels sounding like they're at the same level. And this is one way to do that. When I'm talking about doing live streaming with remote guests and hosts, I'm generally gonna be referring to cases where you're using a, an online platform like StreamYard, Restream.io, Riverside.fm, and there are a whole host of others out there as well. Now, the challenge with these services is that they don't really have a great way to get everyone's level sounding the same. Now, they do have peak meters generally, and some of them have meters that are almost useless. For example, on StreamYard, which is a service I really like, they have these little meters that have no markings whatsoever on them, and you don't know what halfway up green means. <laughs> you just are kind of at a loss. And even on the services where you do have markings on the meters, like Riverside.fm, even if both people on their own microphone in different locations, as they each talk, and the meters bump up and top out at about minus 12 dB, they still may not sound the same loudness. So there's an important distinction here to understand, and that is the difference between metering with peak meters, like we're used to seeing on digital devices, versus actually loudness metering. If you need to understand that distinction, I recommend you go take a look at this video where we talked about the difference and what loudness metering is. So to solve this problem, if I'm going to stream, say for example, on StreamYard, and I'm going to have a remote guest or host or multiple, what I do is I actually put a loudness meter on a separate computer, not the computer that I'm streaming from, but a separate computer. And I use that as another participant in the stream before we start the stream. And on that other computer, we have a loudness meter running that can actually measure everyone's levels. So here's how I do it. I use, first of all, an app called Audio Hijack. This is a Mac only app. It does cost. I'll put a link for it down below if you're interested. There may be free versions of other apps out there that can do the same job. This is one that I happen to have already, so I use it. As far as loudness meters, there is also a free loudness meter called Yulian Loudness Meter. It runs on both Mac and PC, and I'll put a link for that down below. Now, as I mentioned, you do need a computer that is separate from the one you're going to be streaming on, and I just ran this over on my MacBook Pro. And then, of course, you're going to need to use some sort of streaming service like Restream.io, StreamYard, Riverside.fm, or any of those kind of cloud-based live streaming multi-participant services. So here's how I set it up. On my main computer, I log in to StreamYard. Then on my secondary computer, the MacBook Pro, I install Audio Hijack or some other similar app that can actually take audio from one application and stream it to another. I have my MacBook Pro also join that same StreamYard session, so it becomes a participant in that session. Then I configure Audio Hijack to capture the audio from the browser that is connected to StreamYard. So in this case, it's going to be Chrome. Then I configure Audio Hijack to take the audio from Chrome, that is the StreamYard session, and then pipe that over into the Yulian loudness meter. So now the Yulian loudness meter is showing how loud the audio is in the StreamYard session. I make the UI of the Yulian loudness meter as large as possible, fill as much of the screen as possible, and then I share the screen for that StreamYard session on the MacBook Pro. So I just click on share screen here, and now my screen is being shared in the StreamYard session from the MacBook Pro. So everyone in the session can now see the loudness meter as another participant. And then all of the participants for the live stream should also be in the live stream studio, in this case, again, StreamYard. So the next step is everyone mutes their microphone except for the person whose loudness we are measuring and targeting. And so that person talks for 20 to 30 seconds. And while they're talking, everyone watches the loudness meter. And what we're doing here is we're trying to target a loudness of about minus 23 LUFS. There are a lot of reasons for that. If you have questions about that, maybe we can make another video about why we would target that level on a live stream. But that's generally what I'm going to target here for live streams. If they need to, if they're coming in not quite as loud as minus 23, they may need to increase their gain or their input level on their microphone. Or they might need to move a little bit closer to their microphone. If they're coming in too loud, they may need to back off their microphone just a touch or turn the gain down. Once that person is at minus 23 LUFS, then they can go ahead and mute and it's the next person's turn until everyone has done it. Now, once you have everyone's level set like that, everyone should perceptually be coming in at the same loudness, which is going to make it a lot easier for your audience to listen to the live stream. Now, 
I've failed on this miserably in some previous live streams. And so that's why I kind of looked into this whole process to figure out a way to solve that problem. From here, you can go ahead and take the MacBook Pro, which is running audio hijack and the loudness meter. You can take them out of the StreamYard session and even just shut that computer down. You're done with that and then get on with live streaming. Here's a quick demo. Okay, welcome to the stream. We haven't started yet. We're just in the studio getting set up here. And first thing I wanna do is work on our levels a little bit and get us into the same area. So what I'm going to do is, if you wouldn't mind muting for just a few seconds, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how I'm going to do it and then we'll have you do the same thing. Okay. All right. All right, first I'm going to reset the meter. Okay. Checking one, two, three. What we're watching here is that little gray box or lighter gray box that says integrated LUFS. And right now you can see we're at minus 19. So I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. What we're aiming for is minus 23. And uh, wait a minute, actually bump that up and pull this back. I'm gonna reset now. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we're closer to minus 23 now. Checking on our levels here, checking one, two, three, four, five. I need to bring it up a little bit. All right, checking one, two, three, four, five, checking. I'm gonna reset, and here we go again. I have the gain set a little bit higher this time, so I have the mic gain at 48, I think, maybe 52. It's hard to tell with this. And then I have the trim, the gain trim at plus probably three. So this is gonna bring us here right into about minus, tiny bit more. Checking one, two, three, checking one, two, three, four, five. And one more notch, okay. Minus 23 is what we're aiming for here. There we go. All right, we're right around minus 23. So I think um, back one notch and reset. Okay, checking one, two, three. Checking to see if our levels are right around minus 23. That's where we wanna be. And of course, there's some natural variability in one's voice, but this, um, this looks to be pretty good here. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it here and say that we're right about at minus 23. So what I'm gonna do is uh, let's go ahead and have you do the same thing, talk for a little bit. And uh, I will go ahead and I'll come in if I need to and, and give you instructions, but that's the main idea. We're aiming for 23 or minus 23. And then if you're significantly below that, go ahead and increase your gain on your audio interface there. And let's go ahead and start it from there. Part of the fun is the experimentation. Let's see what this does. Wow. It, I, I'm guessing that this mic is pretty sensitive because I'm hardly moving the, the gain knob at all, and it's, it's making a lot of uh, difference. So let's see what that does. I backed off just a little bit, and that seems to be a little closer. What do you think? Okay, I'm getting the thumbs up. Thanks. Okay, I think we're good there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull the loudness out of the stream here. I go ahead and move us around. There we go. All right, now we are, our levels are set so that we could actually start our live stream now. So let's talk of, well, we didn't set a topic, did we? No, we didn't, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to have a topic ready to go and we got so excited about setting things up that we forgot to set a topic. So I'm gonna have you be the interviewer this time. Why don't you interview me? All right. Uh, tell me, what are you most excited about in terms of uh, what are you most excited about to learn next in terms of working with audio or editing audio or uh, capturing audio? Let's go with capturing audio. Okay. Uh, ambisonics, I think, is kind of interesting to me. I, I, I think the application is fairly narrow. Like there's not a lot, I mean, it, it, it's big in, when you're creating immersive things like a lot of games, for example, Oculus and, and things like that, which is not really my thing. I'm not really into that, but I'm interested in capturing naturalistic sound using ambisonic microphones and then um, just just being able to shoot some nature scenes or something like that for me is kind of interesting. It's just something I haven't done before and I'd like to try my hand at it and see how it goes. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, Make sure you do that and be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.